Hi, I'm James Dilley, experimental archaeologist and flint napper. For this video, I'll be talking about the tronche axe head, how they were made, and the reason behind the tronche flake. Tronche axe heads as a stone tool typology date to the Mesolithic, which in Britain runs from around 11 and a half thousand years ago to 6,000 years ago. I'm sticking to Britain mostly for this video because tronche axes are a typology used in Britain. Similar axes were made around the world and they fit into their own typology and cultures. Tronche axe heads were the first of their kind in prehistoric Britain. Following the end of the Upper Paleolithic, woodworking appears to become a more common craft in the Mesolithic. But what does tronche mean? In French, it means a knife or a slicer, but I'm mostly going to be talking about axes. So arguably, we should be talking about trancheur or tranche axes, which both essentially mean slice in French. To make dugout canoes and bows, you need heavier duty tools than just laminar blades. People almost certainly had to shape wooden objects in the Paleolithic but we just don't have a consistent presence of likely woodworking tools. It's possible that the earliest axes were made from repurposed blade cores. Tronche axes were probably both used in the hand and in a wooden handle, possibly even with an antler sleeve. Examples of Mesolithic wooden handles from Scandinavia show that they were hafted both as axes and adzes, and some show refined levels of crafting to actually make the haft. Now we know what an axe is, it's a tool for cutting wood, felling trees and shaping timber, but I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce another tool with a similar appearance and name the adze. Now the primary difference between an adze and an axe is that an axe's blade is oriented vertically, whereas an adze's blade is oriented horizontally. Now it's an almost certainty that people in the Mesolithic used both tranche axes and adzes, but when you're only left with the stone axe head, it's pretty hard to tell whether it was originally an axe or an adze. We'll leave tranche axes and adzes for now. I want to explore tranche flakes. Now clearly they imply some level of sharpness and slicing, but flint tools are generally fairly sharp. So why is there a separate classification? Tranche refers to the removal of a specific flake from the end of a tool. Once the flake has been detached, it leaves a razor sharp, fresh edge. Now we can see where the basic definition of slice comes in. The creation of a tranche flake comes down to careful preparation of a platform on the lateral edge of the tool. A good removal should travel across the face of the tool from one side to the other and importantly, overshoot the blade edge. If the flake doesn't overshoot the flaked cutting edge, it's not a tranche flake as it doesn't produce the distinctive single flake scarred edge. Making a sharp edge with a tranche removal can be traced back to the Paleolithic. Here in Britain, we have a very special site that produced a number of hand axes with tranche removals at their tip. Earthen pit near the village of Boxgrove in West Sussex was excavated from the 1980s to 90s. It is best known for the discovery of a butchery site dating back to approximately half a million years ago. Many of the flint hand axes from Boxgrove were finely flaked using antler soft hammers, which were also found. Hand axes are butchery tools best suited for cutting meat and dismembering animal carcasses, so it makes sense to give these tools a razor sharp edge. 
Interestingly, tranche axes are more common in areas where flint naturally occurs. In southern Britain, they're very common finds, though often out of context in plough soil. Further north, they are rarer, despite the large number of Mesolithic sites being present. It's been suggested that where pieces of stone were not available to make axes, people actually used antler for their axe heads instead. It's also possible that tranche axes are rarer in northern Britain because they were continuously re-sharpened like a favourite pencil until there was little left and any stub that remained was probably used as a blade core to make full use of the locally scarce raw material. In Wales and Ireland, Mesolithic people began making axes from ground stone where flint was limited. Some were specifically made to be placed in burials and were shaped from materials such as shale, which might not have been the toughest of stones. The maintenance and resharpening of tranche axes and adzes is fairly straightforward. Once the blade is chipped or becomes blunt, another platform on the lateral edge can be made before a tranche flake is detached. A few minutes of small flakes, edge abrasion, a hard strike, and your axe or adz is sharp again. Examples range in length from over 30 centimetres to just a few centimetres in length which probably shows tools that were lost or deposited at different stages in their use life. They're different to later Neolithic flint axes, which were typically flaked before being ground smooth. The result gives a similar straight cutting edge, but not with the same sharpness as a tranchade blade. The downside is that a tranchade blade is much more fragile. A tranche axe would typically be made using a piece of flint that was opportunistically found. Large tabular pieces of flint would have been found and used, but were not mined like they were in the Neolithic. For that reason, it's not uncommon to see cortex, which is the skin of the flint, on these axes. Now that I've got my piece of flint, I'll use a hard hammer to detach some of the larger flakes. A good replica of a tranche axe is not a piece of art, like most early prehistoric tools. So I have to be mindful not to worry too much about making something that looks good. It needs to work well as a tool, and that's all. With the main flakes removed, the piece of flint is looking a little narrower. Some smaller flakes to tidy up the edges and just to straighten up the sides. This will make it easier to half the tool. Now I can think about the blade. The blade end can't be too thin as I'm about to remove material with the tranche flake. The sides need to be fairly square in preparation for the striking platform. A little abrasion to thicken and change the angle of the platform. Now it's down to that final strike to make the tranche. It cuts very effectively into green wood. Obviously seasoned timber would be a tougher task and increase the chance of edge damage. I guess that in itself could suggest Mesolithic people favoured working green wood as it wouldn't be as damaging to their tools.
as I always like to encourage, thinking about a tool's raw material value and the implications are as important about thinking of the activities that might have happened based on a tool's presence.